you really want to know what makes it go, what takes it high or sends it low down, well, you can work it out if you just learn about the way things work. If you really want to know how it can ride or bump and jump or glide and slide, you ought to take a little look inside the way things work and watch the thing bump that turns the knob that makes the jigger jig that turns the thing jig that pulls the trigger that makes the jigger dig if you really want to know how it can fly without a wing or string to tie with you find the same simple rules apply with the way things work there are all kinds of surprises in store for visitors to Mammoth Island one day I was out walking with my young friend Olive when we came across a simply remarkable sight goodness gracious Olive, look at those huge lemons. Yes? Olive, they're enormous. Harvesting them must be a lot of work. Work? The lemon harvest is really cool. And it's about to start. We went to see the preparations for the harvest. Hi, Auntie Brenda! Uncle Pillbeam! How's it all going? Hi, Olive! Do you like our new plastic combs? We got them just in time for the harvest! They won't be as good as the old wooden ones, but there you go. Um, what are the combs for? <laughs> What for? Our mammoths must be immaculate on lemon picking day. <laughs> now there's a good mammoth. We'll have you sorted out in no time. <laughs> Bother. That's better. You missed some, Brenda. What's going on? It might be a good idea to step back a bit. Olive, I think now would be a good time to... out of the way of the mammoths, I was at last able to explain what had caused this strange phenomenon. All things are made up of incredibly tiny things called atoms, which are far, far too small for us to see. And inside atoms are even smaller particles called electrons. Every electron has an electrical charge, which scientists call a negative charge. This charge is the fundamental cause of electricity. What happened to the mammoth's coat was caused by something called static electricity. It is caused by electrons that have been moved from one place to another. This can happen when a plastic comb is rubbed against clothes. And the object from which they have moved is left with a positive charge. A negative electrical charge repels other negative charges, but attracts positively charged particles. 
This is why a negatively charged comb will attract a piece of paper placed nearby. Hmm? Electrons are repelled to the far side of the paper, leaving the paper nearest the comb with a positive charge. And why the mammoth charged coats, which were charged by their combing, attracted all that litter. Fortunately, a static charge will leak away over time. I'm sure all this nonsense is something to do with those new combs of yours. There was nothing wrong with the old wooden ones, you know. Frienda, take it from me. This was nothing to do with my new combs. They are state of the art. Eventually, Brenda got her way. The plastic combs were discarded and the mammoths were groomed with the wooden combs. Ready, Troy? Ready, Uncle Frank. <laughs> enough time picking up all that litter. We'll never get the lemons picked today. Troy, try this. It's a new design, nice and strong. Made of a special metal called zinc. I thought we could do with something stronger than wood. Stronger? Ooh, I like the sound of that. Uh, this one's a bit heavier. Made of copper. Just right for the mammoth to handle. Uh, there. Now we should get those lemons picked in double quick time. shaky start with the wooden lance, Troy and his mammoth looked set to make short work of the lemon harvest. That is, until they both steered the same lemon. <laughs> A shock. Electric shocks can be painful and dangerous, and I believe it was an electric shock caused by current electricity. Current electricity is produced by electrons on the move. Unlike static electricity, it can only move through certain types of material, such as metals. These materials are called conductors. If you want to make electrons move like this, you'll need a source of energy. Uh, this can be in the form of light, or heat, or motion, or the energy produced by a chemical reaction. This is the kind of energy used in a battery-powered circuit, and it was the cause of what just happened to Troy. Lemons, you see, contain acid, which reacts with zinc and copper, causing electrons in the copper to move through the lemon over to the zinc. When Troy and his mammoth stuck their lances through the same lemon, they made a battery, completed the electrical circuit, and got quite a shock. <laughs> How's that? There you go, my lad. Do you mean we can use current electricity for more than just scaring mammoths? Much more. Electricity can be harnessed to power all sorts of things, from light bulbs to trains. It can be used to carry information through the circuits of a computer or to power a music system or television set. Well, you got me there. If we want power, we usually use a mammoth. Or two. Or me. That boy. Let's get ourselves a lemon. I'm still not sure where the lemons come in. Oh. I think I'd better try and make this clearer. When I say current, I am referring to the flow of electrons around an electrical circuit. A circuit is usually made up of a source of electricity like a battery, or, in Troy's case, a giant lemon, 
an electrical device like a light bulb, and the wiring that conducts the electricity between them. The current flows from the negative terminal to the bulb and then back to the positive terminal. To be accurate, there are two types of current. The kind of current produced by a battery is called direct current. The electricity runs in one direction. Oh, from the negative terminal uh, to the positive terminal uh, as the electrons travel through the wires. Main electricity is not direct current, but alternating current. Alternating current is so-called because the electrons change direction 50 times a second because the terminals of the supply change from positive to negative and back. Oh. So, these electrons hide inside lemons and when you poke a lemon with a lance, they jump out and scare mammoths. Not quite, Pillbeam. You said they flow around a circuit. Do you mean they flow like water? Oh, that's a very good way of imagining it. Uh, and the battery is rather like a pump. OK. Just so long as I don't have to poke no more lemons. It might well be, but all I know is it's almost dark and there are lemons to pick. I'll go and round up some people to help us. But we'll still have to work all night to catch up. Brenda's got a point. Perhaps we could build some kind of electric power machine to help with the lemon picking. <laughs> like what? Like an electrical lemon squeezer? No, nothing beats mammoths when it comes to squashing lemons. No, something to help us with the picking. Then how about an electrical mammoth groomer? I think it's a bit late to worry about grooming mammoths, Troy. If we're going to be working at night, we could do with some extra light. We wouldn't want to go bumping into the mammoths. Quite right, Olive. What did you have in mind? Light falls quickly on Mammoth Island. Which is why Olive's idea was exactly what the lemon pickers needed. A lemon battery-powered floodlight. Oh, marvellous idea, Olive. And then, when all the lemons have been picked, there'll be plenty of juice left over for everyone. Now all we need is the energy to stay awake and drink it. Drink it? I don't like lemon juice. But many do, Uncle Pillbeam. 